Today I'm going to be solving problem 1.55 from the book Introduction to Electric Dynamics by David J. Griffith, where the problem states, check Stokes' theorem using the function v is equal to y a y x hat plus b x y hat, a and b are constants, and the circular path of radius r is centered at the origin in the x y plane. So we're going to check Stokes' theorem using this given function, v is equal to a y x hat plus b of x y hat. Stokes' theorem states that the line integral of a vector field over a loop is equal to the flux of the enclosed surface, which is given to us in the book by this formula. So, doing the line integral first, we take the vector field dotted with a tiny piece of the path of the loop, and since it's circular, given by this path of radius r centered at the origin x, y plane. Radius r, the angle it makes. We can parameterize the path and use sine and cosine, where x will be equal to r cosine theta y will be equal to r sine theta. So we know that we need to find the displacement vector dl along the boundary, which can be taken as dl is equal to dx x hat plus dy y hat, where x is equal to r cosine theta again, y is equal to r sine theta, Differentiating these with respect to x and y, we get dx is equal to negative r sine theta, d theta, dy is equal to r cosine theta, d theta. Once we have those given, we can plug it right back into our displacement vector to get the new function. dl is equal to negative r sine theta d theta x hat plus r cosine theta d theta y hat now we dot this with our vector function d dot dl to get integral of a of y x hat plus b of x y hat dotted with our dl negative r sine theta d theta x hat plus r cosine theta d theta y hat. We know that a unit vector dotted with a unit vector will get us 1, leading this equation, and our path is circular, so we go from 0 all the way around to 2 pi, leading us to create the equation 0 integral from 0 to 2 pi of a r squared sine squared theta d theta substitute the y here with r sine theta and we substitute the x here with cosine theta to get the following d theta Now, we can see it's in terms of d theta, so I can pull up all my constants to the front, simplify this down. And we know from the half angle formula that I can make sine, sine squared theta become one half, one minus cosine two theta. Same thing with cosine squared theta becomes one half, 1 plus cosine 2 theta. Now that I know that, I can substitute that all back in and take my constants out to the front to get the equation simplified down to a r squared over 2, 0 to 2 pi, 1 minus cosine 2 theta, d theta plus b of r squared over 2. 
2 pi integral 1 plus cosine 2 theta d theta. So, doing this integral on the left hand side, we get 1 dx integral of minus cosine 2 theta. This becomes minus sine 2x over 2. For the right hand side here, you get the same thing, but instead of a minus, it becomes a plus. So, 1 plus cosine 2 theta x plus sine 2x over 2. And this is all about here from 0 to 2 pi. So we know that for any multiple of 2 pi, sine will go to 0, and sine 0 is always 0. So when we plug in 2 pi, we just end up with 2 pi, giving us negative a of r squared over 2 times 2 pi plus b of r squared over 2 times 2 pi. Simplifying this down, 2 is cancel, 2 is cancel gives us pi r squared b minus a. This is where we do the line integral. Now, for doing the curl of e dotted with da. For this part, we just get our function a of y x half plus v of x y half and take the curl of it where the formula for curl is given as x hat, y hat, z hat, partial derivative with respect to x, partial derivative with respect to y, partial derivative with to z. So we can see for x we have a y, for y hat we have b of x, and there's no z component. So when we do for x hat, we see that the partial derivative of 0, 0, partial derivative of z, z. Same thing for y hat, we have nothing. Partial derivative of x of 0, nothing. Partial derivative of z with respect to a y, nothing. But for z, it's different. Partial derivative of x for b of x will get us b. Partial derivative of y with respect to a, a y will get us minus a. So now that we have the curl of the vector function, we can plug it back in to our equation. c hat b minus a dotted with da. Well, since we have a circular path here given to us from before of radius r centered at the origin, the area vector just becomes da is equal to pi r squared in the z hat direction. Plugging all this together, we can see that this then becomes c hat b minus a times pi r squared c hat. Again, c hat dot c hat is equal to 1. We get the final expansor as pi r squared b minus a, which is the same answer we got for doing the line you go here, proving that Stokes theorem is valid.